Hi, everybody. Whoa, that was loud. Um, I know the schedule says Awesomer uh, MVC with OOCSS, but um, I called an audible <coughs> on, my, uh, on my talk. Um, so <laughs> we're going to be talking about um, wire.js today, uh, a new library that uh, provides uh, inversion of control, uh, aspect-oriented programming, uh, and a lot of other stuff to help you bootstrap, kick off, and write uh, apps in a very structured way in JavaScript. So if you were here uh, this morning uh, for uh, John Hand's talk on modules, you probably saw uh, this little app here, um, Pirate Script or Noob Script, where uh, you can pick which one you think is more piratey? We'll go with this one. Hey, all right. We'll play our little game here. All right, I got them both right. <laughs> and so you've probably built an app that sort of looks similar to that under the hood, and it probably looks something like this. Um, you've got on the front end, you've got some views. Um, you've got a controller sort of managing those guys. You've got some models that are accessing some data. Um, and all of those are communicating with one another. But who creates those things? Those are the application. Who creates the controller if the controller creates the views? Who creates the models if the controller, uh, who creates the controller if the controller creates the models? Who, who does all of that? Make that a little smaller. So one thing you can do, and you've probably done this, and I've done it, is you write some piece of code that you load via whatever mechanism, and it does all of that for you. You write programmatic code to new your controller, new your views, hand them to the controller, new your models, do all of that stuff. Set everything up, set it all in motion. And then your code looks like this, and everything's good. Except you kind of keep doing that over and over for every page in your application and every application you write, and it always kind of goes the same way. You create some views, you create a controller, you create some modules, you realize that, oh, I should have done it in this order because, hey, I can do a bunch of this stuff before DOM is, the DOM is ready, so I can give the user a better experience, so I can do some XHRs, pull in some data. All right, let's refactor. All right, first we'll load some models, we'll wait for DOM ready, we'll create some views, we'll create a controller. Ah, I could create the controller before DOM ready too. Okay, we refactor again, we load some more models, we create a controller. Ah, oh, crap. My controller expected my views in the, con in the constructor. So I've got to refactor my controller. Oh, geez. Okay, I do all of this, I debug, I fix all the errors. Finally, I have a running app, right? No, I get a blank page. So I debug again, I fix all of those errors, and then I'm fed up. Right? I do, I'm doing all this just so I can run my app. Not, this is not really my app at all. And even if you're writing a single page application um, and you only have to write one loader, well, so you think, you're probably going to want to structure your application so that you have, if it's a single page app, you have different areas of your application that the user can navigate to. And you don't want to load all of that in the beginning. So say you have a user preferences area that has a few tabs, uh, some HTML templates for each of the tabs, some JavaScript driving it all. You don't really want to load that, at least uh, most of the time, until the user actually needs it. Because how often do users change their preferences? Maybe once when they first log in. So you go and you write some code to load your user preferences and create all the objects and set the whole thing in motion. And it looks kind of like this. So you do it all over again. And then you have another section of your application, and you do it all over again. And you write the same code over and over, even though it's a single page app. And not only do you have to create it all, you have to clean it all up. When the user clicks save or cancel in their preferences, you have to destroy all those DOM nodes that you created, get it off the screen, free all your objects. Um, 
you know, make the browser happy. Don't keep it all around. So can we automate or make this process easier? How can we do that? And that's what wire.js aims to do. It aims to allow you to declaratively uh, specify what your controller is, what your views are, what your models are, what DOM nodes you need, um, other things like um, what events should uh, be hooked up between your view and your controller so that the controller can respond to actions that the user takes in the view. And it allows you to do that all declaratively. You don't have to worry about the order. You don't have to worry about when DOM ready happens. Wire is going to figure all of that out for you. Assemble it all into a running application. Kick it off. So you write a JavaScript object literal or you know, JSON-like spec that Wire assembles into a running app or a running section of your app for you and manages that so that you can then destroy it with a single line of code later. So these are the things that Wire does. We already mentioned um, component lifecycle management. Uh, it also provides dependency injection, including DOM nodes. So if you have a view that you want to create in Wire and it needs a DOM node, a DOM container where it's going to put its HTML, you can hand that DOM node to the view in the Wire spec. And again, Wire will work out the order of things. Uh, it provides a set of connectors which allow you to hook up your objects to one another, hook your views up to your controllers, hook your models up to your views, uh, hook plain old objects up to each other. And it provides um, some aspect-oriented programming. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. So Wire manages life cycles by allowing you to create, configure, initialize, and destroy components. And it does this through a plugin architecture so that you can do this with uh, any type of object. It supports um, plain JavaScript objects out of the box, but uh, it comes with a plugin now that allows you to do this with uh, digits so that if you don't want to use dojo type in your HTML to create digits, you can create them in wire and it will create them for you and then clean them up when you, uh, when you want the, to destroy that section of your application. You could also, there'll be uh, plugins coming for jQuery. Since jQuery widgets are sort of non-standard JavaScript objects, they, uh, you have to create them through the widget factory and you have to destroy them through the jQuery API. So you can't just new a JavaScript object. So um, that can be handled through wire plugins also. So remember that user preferences screen that we had to write a loader for to bring it into existence, set up all the events. We had to new all the, the, uh, the views and the controller, hook them up, and then remember to destroy it all when we're done. You can wire that whole thing into existence uh, with one line of code. You write a spec for it, wire it into existence. Wire will manage all of that for you, hook it all up. The user interacts with it. And then when the user's done, they click save or cancel. In your spec, you've hooked up that save or cancel uh, event to your controller. Your controller then destroys uh, the wired container. And all of that stuff goes away. But isn't this, uh, when we're talking about dependencies, uh, so if we have a view that depends on uh, some data. Isn't this what we already talk about when we talk about an AMD loader? Um, yes and no. We're going to divert just a second and talk about why that's the case. Good software is built on abstractions. We know this. Um, we'd like to be able to write generic components that can be configured to solve a problem in a specific situation for us. So we don't have to write that component over and over and over and over again. <clears throat> and if you do that, you can mix and match them. 
Dojo uh, data stores are a good example of this. They provide a, a JSON REST store, they provide a memory store, uh, and they provide a standard API for accessing those, get, put, add, remove. They also provide some decorators uh, that allow you to do caching, uh, allow you to observe new uh, objects being added to the store in your, in your application, so you can react to that, display a new item in a list. Um, and the reason this all works is because they've created a standard API that matches what we expect from a, a REST endpoint. So you could, with this API, design a view that's very generic and could draw its uh, data from a REST endpoint or from a memory store for testing, or maybe you have some data that you just want to, um, you don't need to fetch it from, from a REST store. It's a small amount of data like um, you know, name prefixes, Mr., Mrs., things like that. It's not going to change. So you just use a memory store for that. You could design a view that could use either of those or any combination of those things. And so really, there are many kinds of dependencies. There are integral dependencies, which your component just simply can't function without these. Uh, it needs these exact things, and AMD is really good, uh, and other module loaders, uh, dependency managers, are really good at solving that problem. Um, those are also required dependencies. It just can't work without those. But then there are also a set of configurable dependencies, like a data store. You might want to point a data store at this REST endpoint, or you might want to use a memory store, and you might want to hand either one of those to a view. You don't want to specify that data store as a dependency in your module dependencies, because then you can't use that component anywhere else. And then there are optional dependencies. Your component may behave in one way if you give it some extra uh, information, but maybe that information is, is, isn't available or you don't need it in a particular situation. So you'd like your component to still function, but maybe in a more limited way. And that's perfectly reasonable. So there are optional dependencies. Module loaders don't necessarily solve the configurable and optional dependencies problem. They certainly solve the integral and required dependencies problem. And this is the whole one of the holes that Wire.js fills. It allows you to inject specific dependencies, concrete dependencies, the actual objects that are going to be used when the application runs um, for the specific situation that you need. So if you have a view you want to use multiple times, you want to give it different kinds of data, just instantiate three copies of it and inject the data stores that each one needs. So. For example, let's take a look at what that looks like. This is actually um, code from the pirate script or nude script uh, application. And this is um, a wire spec. This is what you would write to bring all the components of your application together. Um, you'll notice that it itself is an AMD module, but it's just basically a JavaScript object literal. And you can see down here at the bottom, we're declaring that, hey, I've got a view called codes view. It's, it comes from this AMD module. Instantiate me one of these. Um, I want to pass it. It's, I want to pass its constructor a DOM node that I'm going to query for. It has the class codes container, which might return many, but I want the first one. I've got heading view, which was up at the top. You saw the pictures of the pirates. Uh, that comes, that's going to instantiate this AMD module called he, uh, heading view. Um, again, we're going to hand it a DOM node. <clears throat> We've got some results that we're going to put in this results container, but notice there's no results view here. We don't need that when we start. We'll see how that happens later. And then we've got our controller, and it's a pirate script controller. And we're going to create it. We're going to call its constructor with no arguments, and then we're going to set a bunch of properties on it. And uh, if you're familiar with JSON referencing, the syntax $ref, uh, this is uh, wire uses JSON referencing syntax. So what we're saying is, 
there's a code, underscore codes view property on the controller, and hey, make it point to this view up here that we just created. So I'm wiring in the views, the codes view, uh, some data, a node that the controller is gonna manage for the whole application, and, and some data turns and thresholds up here. So these can be just plain old JavaScript objects if you want. They can be arrays, they can be values, they can be strings, they can be whatever you want. But Wire is gonna create all of this. It's gonna manage the order of creating these views. It's gonna make sure the DOM is ready before it creates this view and before it hands it to the controller because the controller can't really do anything with it until the view is ready and the view can't be ready until the DOM is ready. And um, so I just mentioned that, uh, the ordering, very important. Um, Wire takes care of that for you. If you notice, you could move this stuff around in this spec uh, and the application would still work. So you don't have to think about it. I'll take this controller and put it up here. Uh-oh, let's just lint that real quick. Oh, haha, -ha. all right. Let's reload. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, I must have a comma. Do I have a comma in there? Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna worry about commas right now. Okay, so, if you have component A that needs component B that needs component C, D, and E, and C needs a DOM node, normally you'd have to think about that. You'd have to write the code, create the objects in the right order, access the DOM, use your DOM ready function, put the right set of code inside of that DOM ready callback, uh, make sure you've got your uh, variables scoped correctly for all of that. You don't need to worry about that here. Just declare what you need and Wire will make it happen uh, when it needs to happen. Uh, connectors is the next thing that Wire offers. And these are, when you draw a box and line diagram, these are the lines. Um, these are just as important, how your components communicate are just as important as the components themselves. And Wire offers uh, a couple of these uh, out of the box. You can inject dependencies directly so that objects get references to other objects and you can call methods on them. That's one type of connector. Um, but that's pretty tight, tightly coupled, but sometimes you need it. Um, it's less tightly coupled than actually creating the object inside your, inside your component and then you're using it, because here you could swap different ones in. Um, but you can also hook up uh, events and PubSub. And Wire does this through plugins. Uh, right now it supports Dojo, so it actually has a plugin that when you use um, the Wire event connector, and you're using the Dojo plugin, it's using Dojo Connect under the, under the scenes. Uh, same with PubSub. If you do PubSub and you, in, you use the Dojo uh, plugin, it's gonna use Dojo PubSub. So you're integrating with, if you're already using Dojo PubSub, you can leverage that. You don't have another PubSub system uh, to take care of and work with. And lastly, um, it provides aspect-oriented programming, also through a plugin. Uh, and if you're not familiar with AOP, um, it's a way that you can augment and customize the functionality of existing components. Maybe you wrote, maybe you didn't write, without actually modifying the source code. It allows you to add aspects to components. Uh, some examples of those, you can apply decorators. Uh, you can add advice before, after, around. Um, you can introduce mix-ins in the fly, introduce new methods, introduce new interfaces into an object. And, you know, these are all useful in very specific situations. Uh, one, the, the sort of canonical AOP example is adding logging to some component that you don't have access to. Right, that's great, but it's kind of boring. So, more fun is to take uh, Dojo's JSON Restore write yourself a validating decorator for it that uses JSON schema, 
use wire to inject the schema into your decorator and then apply your decorator to uh, Dojo's JSON REST store and then inject that store into your controller, all without changing any of the code in JSON REST store or your controller. So let's see what some of this stuff looks like. So we already saw this example. This is from pirate script or noob script. And here's another example um, that I've pulled from uh, an application where uh, wire is being used. <clears throat> it's going to be a production application. And some pieces of this, um, I'm using some wire plugins. Uh, this is just an array. There's nothing special about it. Wire just notices that, hey, these modules are plugins as it loads them and uh, instantiates them as plugins. So in this app, we're going to have some, we're going to have some data stores. We've got a JSON REST store that points to some people. And hey, we're going to decorate that with this. And what is this? Well, up here in the wire AOP module, we're declaring some decorators. We're saying, hey, there's a caching decorator, and it is going to use Dojo's caching store. We've got a validating decorator that we wrote ourselves. So down here, we're going to apply a validating decorator to the JSON REST store that we're creating for people. And we're going to hand it a schema that we're loading here. This is AMD module, AMD loading. Uh, we're loading a schema, handing it to our decorator, and then applying the decorator to the JSON REST store, all without changing any of those, uh, the JSON REST store. We've got another store for occupations. And hey, we're going to use um, a caching decorator here because I know that these occupations just don't change very, very often. So while the user's logged in, I don't care. You know, I'm just going to present them always with the same set of uh, occupations. So we apply a caching decorator. And we're going to use a Dojo memory store to, as, the, as the backing store for the cache. Uh, and then we've got some name prefixes that we're going to load too. This is uh, something else that Wire provides is the notion of uh, reference resolvers. You'll see this uh, in a couple of places. This is resolving a reference to a REST resource. So what this ends up being is actually another JSON REST store. And this is just shorthand. Oh, it's not going to be a JSON REST store. I'm sorry. It's going to create a JSON REST store, issue a query on it, and return a promise so that when, that when that data comes back from the server, name prefixes is going to be the actual data, not a store. And that's fine, because that's what I need. I need the prefixes. I don't need the store here. We're going to create a view, hand it a DOM reference, and then we're going to create a controller from our, our application. I'm going to set some properties on it. We're going to hand our stores to our controller because we want our controller to be managing the data, not the view. The controller can decide how to hand that uh, data to the view. And then we're going to apply um, an event connector. This is one of Wire's supported connectors. And up at the top, we're using the Dojo events plugin. So this is going to use dojo.connect to do this operation. So uh, you, know, you could load the jQuery events plugin, and it would use jQuery to do this. So what this is saying is I want to connect person views on save event to the controller's handle save person method. So you can imagine when the user clicks the Save button in the view, the view fires an on save event, and the controller's handle save method gets, gets called. Same thing with, uh, with uh, on cancel calls the controller's handle cancel method. And what's interesting here is if you were writing this app yourself uh, without wire or maybe with a framework or something like that, you might be tempted to actually give a reference of the view to the controller and have it do that. But the controller really doesn't care. It doesn't need to have a reference to the view. All it really needs to know is when the data was either saved or canceled. So here we can avoid that um, very loose coupling. 
We just care about the events. We don't care about uh, the reference itself, about the view itself. And that's it. Um, that's Wire.js. You can find it on GitHub. Um, the currently released version, like I said, uh, supports uh, Dojo through a set of plugins. There'll be jQuery plugins coming soon. Um, and uh, if you've uh, heard a lot of the talk about modules uh, at, this, uh, at this conference, uh, Wire works really well uh, with modules and AMD. So if you're using AMD or you want to use AMD, um, that's another reason to check out wire.js. Thanks. <laughs>